Hello and welcome. Over the past six months I've been doing quite a bit of home sewing, creating myself a lovely new wardrobe of clothes, but that's meant I have lots of bits of fabric left over from those sewing projects. So I've been using up some of my leftover scraps of fabric to make a few fun projects. I've made some pretty hanging bunting to use for future birthday parties and barbecues. And I've been making little fabric pouchy bags. I made this one to keep the magnifying glass in, which has up till now been housed in an old sock. And this little pouch is perfect. It actually fits my glasses as well. So I think I shall make some more of these to put my glasses in. I've made one for my art pencils and they can go in this little pouch. It's exactly the same design. I've just made it a different shape. And a second one like this for carrying around my lipstick and hand cream and any makeup-y bits I might want can go in this second little pouch. And having so much fun, I've made a slightly larger one that is just big enough to fit my mini iPad. Although it's already got a protective cover, should I unfortunately drop it, which I have done once or twice, so I've been glad of that protective case. It's nice to have this little pretty fabric bag, literally to just make it look pretty when I'm sticking it in my bag. So they're basically, all of these little bags and pouches are ex constructed in exactly the same way, just using different fabrics and a couple of different size rectangly shapes. And lastly, I've made this tiny miniature tote bag, shopping bag, and stitched a little train on the front. And this is going to go with the grandson's Easter present. I've bought a couple bags of little tiny Easter eggs to go inside and a chocolate bunny. So all put together in this little bag will make a lovely Easter gift for him. And today I plan to make a second little bag exactly the same for the granddaughter. So the plan for today's video is to show you how I went about making these different items from my sewing scraps. Let's get sewing. Now to make our little tote bag, I first want two pieces of fabric. Just for comparison, if I fold one of these in half, because that's what we're going to do with our bag, and place our finished bag on top, I've got a good inch of seam allowance all the way around this bag. So your folded fabric needs to be slightly bigger than your finished bag. And for this second bag I'm making, I've got this pretty little unicorn that was a piece of scrap left over from the granddaughter's little dress. So I'm going to use, attach this unicorn to the front of my bag. So now I'm going to pin it in place and stitch a single line of stitching around this edge using the sewing machine. But I'm only stitching through one layer of our fabric. Sorry about the glare in the bottom left of your screen. The sunshine came out and I hadn't noticed it was causing a problem with the camera. So now I've put my pretty little unicorn on. I'm ready to make some handles for this bag. I've got myself a long strip of fabric, 25 inches long and two and a quarter inches wide. And the first thing I'm going to do is fold it in half along its length, wrong side to wrong side. So the outside is the bit I can see and I'm going to put the iron across that. So now I've run the iron along this edge. I've got a nice clear line on the inside of my fabric that I can see. 
and I'm going to fold each. How can I show you? There. So I'm going to open it up. This is the wrong side. And I'm going to turn both sides into the centre and then fold that in half and pin it together. I'm going to do that along the whole length of this piece of strap. Now, depending on the fabric you're using, you might want to run the iron over that again. Don't melt your pin heads though. So now it's all pinned together. I'm going to run a row of stitching along that pinned up edge. Now we have our long length of handle strap. I'm going to fold this in half and cut it in half. Which will give us two handles, one for each side of our bag, both exactly the same length. So with that second piece of fabric that I had at the beginning, I'm going to put right sides, two right sides here. And then we'll take one of our straps that I want to add to our bag. <clears throat> but I don't want to put it on here like that. This is how the finished bag will look. But in order to get the finished bag looking like that, I actually need to put my strap inside here like that. So I'm going to fold back my lining fabric, lay my handle inside and bring this lining fabric back, sandwiching the handle in the middle, there and there, and pin everything in place. Once I've stitched along here, and we open out our bag, our handle will be on the outside. So I'm going to do that here, and the same at the opposite end. We open up the fabric, place in our handle and sandwich it in between the layers. And I'm going to stitch along here and along here. What I also like to do at this stage is once I've decided exactly where I'm going to pin the strap on one side of the bag is to fold it over and match it up so that the handle on the opposite side is pinned in exactly the same position along the seam. At last I've noticed that sunshine and drawn the curtains. <laughs> so I've actually stitched along there two rows of stitching because I wanted to get two rows of stitching over this strap to give it some extra strength. So now I've stitched along both sides, we can turn this right sides out, grab hold of our handles, oh. so I'm going to iron this nice and flat just to make it tidy. Now these are ironed, they look lovely, neat and tidy. So we've got two raw edges still to be finished off. And I'm going to do those on my serger, but you can do it on your sewing machine as well. Fold our bag, the inside, hiding inside, bring my straps together. So here's our bag inside out as it happens. And this is where I'm going to stitch along each side seam. Now I'm going to run this through my serger because I have a serger and I can, but you could just as easily stitch this edge on your sewing machine and then run a zigzag stitch along it. Finished, we can turn it the right way around. And 
there we have our first project a lovely little bag ready to fill with yummy easter gifts two little bags all packed and ready for easter now we've finished the mini tote bag let's make a little envelope pouch for our makeups or art supplies your glasses or whatever you might want to store in it so for our little envelope bag pouch <laughs> i've got a lining fabric and an outer fabric now just like our tote bag you can use the same material for both pieces use whatever you have available now first of all i'm going to cut my lining fabric to size So you would get whatever it is you want to put in your finished pouch and make sure it will fit into our little envelopey shape. And you can start by cutting a rectangle of fabric. So if you start with just a rectangle, fold it in half. And then you can cut across the corner to create that little envelopey shape. So once you've got your lining with its envelope tab at one end, we can use this as a pattern for our outer fabric. So our outer fabric wants to be the same shape but an extra two inches longer at the bottom. If you are making a long thin pouch, like the glasses case, your extra two inches of fabric, when this is all opened out, would be at the bottom of your long thin strip. Let me see, can I do this? There we go. It would look a bit like that. Be longer and thinner with your two inches at the bottom. And we have one more piece of fabric I'm going to cut. And that's another little top piece of envelope. So again, it's the same top shape as our lining fabric. So at this edge where our top shape finishes, I'm going to go down two and a half inches. This is going to be my right side of my lining, the inside. These big splotchy colour bits I don't want to see on my finished product. So taking my outside fabric and placing it right side to what is going to be the right side of my liner. And matching up this bottom straight edge. And I'm going to stitch along here on the sewing machine. So now off of the sewing machine with a row of stitching along the bottom here, I'm going to keep my lining fabric nice and flat and open out the outer cover so that it is folding over and iron this nice and flat so now back from the iron with a nice neat iron seam along the bottom i'm going to put our fabric on the inside of this envelope flap so there's our fabric right sides show it facing up and i'm going to Fold it down so now we can see the wrong side and that's the side I'm going to stitch along here but I don't want to stitch it in this position we need to move it up and I'm going to measure from this corner here an inch and a half so from the corner down an inch and a half I'm going to bring my fabric up to the ruler 
it should match up on the other side, but we will check it. So on from the pointy corner down an inch and a half and pin this in place. So now when we stitch along there on the machine, we should be able to open that out and it'll meet our lining fabric. Now we have a line of stitching along here, open it up, fold it up, and let's see what's it like on the back. Oh, a little bit over, don't know how over, <laughs> we've got a little bit of normal fabric. I'm going to iron this just as we did the other seam. Oh wait, there. So that's that one been through the iron. Now, because my two fabrics don't quite match up, I'm going to trim off my excess. Now, depending exactly where your line of stitching is, you may trim off a little bit excess on your lining. I've got a little excess on my outer fabric. So just bring those two in line with each other. So now we have a long strip of fabric. It's time for a bit of origami folding to make this into our nice little envelopey pouch. So I'm going to turn it over so we can see the wrong side of all our fabrics and bring our long outer fabric all the way up to cover the lining, matching up this shape at the top edge and laying everything nice and flat. When we turn it over again, you should have a nice little strip of your outer fabric showing here. Now, if you've got a big strip, you can fold it to give you that little strip. which will mean you'll have a little excess at the top here and you can cut that to match our other two layers. This little short bit and the rest of our lining. And I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to turn us sideways so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to bring this, fold this up here so that the lining fabric matches up with the lining fabric. You see that edge there. So we have this little flap of pretty fabric on the inside. Now we've not quite finished. Before we start stitching, I want to turn it all over again lift off this outer fabric, turn it over and fold it. So now it is wrong sides showing. So we can see the wrong side of our outer fabric. And if I turn this over, we can see the wrong side of our lining fabric. And this is where I want to pin it in this position. And just for interest at the bottom here, we've got a foldy flap with our outer fabric and a foldy flap of lining fabric. So now I'm going to pin all the way around. Now I'm pinned all the way around. Well, almost. I haven't put any pins along the bottom because I'm not going to do any stitching along the bottom. I'm going to start part way up one side, leaving a gap, which will be an open hole so we can turn everything the right way around. I'm going to start here, work my way all the way to the end of the envelope. Now 
Now, just before we flip it all the right way round, I'm going to take my scissors and cut across these corners. Now, don't cut your stitches. We're just cutting off a little of the excess fabric so it'll turn in the right way a little neater. And now comes the exciting bit. Taking the outer fabric of your project and turning it the right way around. And I'm going to be stuffing the lining into that as well. So just keep pushing it all into that hole and pulling it out at the other side. All of a sudden it'll get loose and it'll poke through. Yay! Now poking my fingers into the hole, I'm going to push up into the top of our envelopey bit. So here's our little envelope. Want to add a button and a buttonhole or a press stud. I've been using little Velcro tabs to clip it shut. And we've got a little bit here. Oh, if I can just tidy it in. So there's this little, little space here that we pulled it all through. So that needs to fold in, have a little stitch. And inside our lining, we have the same. There's a little open bit in the lining that hasn't been stitched. What I also like to do as an extra finishing touch is iron this nice and flat and run a line of stitching along this outer edge. off with a little over stitching along its envelopey flap and a little bit of velcro to fasten it another envelopey pouch for putting thing for storing things in so now I have lots of little envelopey pouches for storing all my treasures I've been making lots of bunting flags each time I do a sewing project. I make some flags with the scrap fabric I have left over. And today I'm going to make a couple more. Now originally I was just making individual single flags planning to stitch these onto a piece of string or ribbon but I have recently realised that if I stitch my final top edge on the serger and just add flag after flag after flag without cutting them off it makes a nice little string ready to hang them up. Now I'm not sure how strong this cotton string will be for hanging up out in the garden. So I'm probably still going to stitch them onto a piece of ribbon anyway. But first of all, I'm going to use up my latest bits of scrap and make some more flags. So I've got a little bit more scrap fabric left for my envelope pouches project. So I'm going to prepare these to make some flags as well. I've made myself a little triangle template for my flags. My triangle happens to be six inches across the top and seven and a half inches down each side. But you can make a triangle flaggy shape any size you want. Where's my wrong side? So on the wrong side of my fabric, 
I'm going to lay on my triangle flag and I found a soft leaded drawing pencil. A soft leaded lead pencil is usually fine to draw on my fabric. But if you had a very dark colour, some tailor's chalk might work better. Now for each finished flag, I like to cut out two triangles of fabric so I can have the pretty fabric on both sides of my flag. Now you could just take these single layers of fabric and zigzag around the edge to seal it in or I'm going to run round it with a serger and use that as your bunting flag. But I've been choosing to take two triangles and put them wrong side to wrong side and stitch them together on the serger which gives me a nice neat serged edge and the right side of my fabric showing on both sides of my flag. Now this particular flag is a rigid woven cotton but quite a lot of my material recently has been a stretchy t-shirty fabric. So I'll take my two triangles of my stretchy pretty scrap fabric and I'm going to sandwich in between them a piece of woven fabric with no stretch. So I'll have my flag sandwiched in the middle, my woven fabric and then on top my second piece of stretchy fabric. So I've got my pretty flag on both sides with a piece of rigid woven fabric sandwiched in the middle. I'll pin the edges and stitch all the way around on the serger. So all pinned up and ready to go. Now I like to stitch it on the serger going down this long edge and just running off the end. And I flip it over and go down the second long edge and run off the end. Once I've done that with all of my flags today, I'll stitch along the top edge, joining them all together as we go. Now flip it over to do the other side. start my next one. Down at the point here, just going to snip this cotton off nice and close. It's not under any pressure, doesn't matter if it frays a little bit, it's just a bit of fun. stitching the long side and all my triangles it's time to stitch along the top and join them all together my first one there now we have another little stewing of flags all joined together already Today, all stitched up, I've made good use of lots of scraps of fabric. I have two lovely little Easter tote bags for the grandchildren. Another envelope pouch to add to my collection. Perfect for my art pencils, makeups, 
sewing scissors, whatever I choose to put in it. And more flags to go with my ever-growing pile of bunting. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a go. And whatever you're doing, have fun doing it. If you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that like button and let me know. Click subscribe and YouTube will make sure you see my next video. So bye for now and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, whatever you're doing, have fun doing it.